Hola. Welcome. Hello. My name is Nicholas Polimanakos. I live here on planet Earth. I am what they consider a human being. Hello. And it's uh, an amazing task and job living here on planet Earth and being a human being. It's, I didn't know what I signed up for. I, I, I didn't, you know, didn't really ask for this, actually, as far as I know. And I find myself here on this planet and I found myself understanding and trying to deal with a contraption electronic devices on planet earth where I could mirror my face through an instrument called a digital camera and mirror my voice through an instrument called a microphone that is enhanced by an instrument called a mixer. And so saying that I'm here on planet earth, Nicholas Polymonakos, I, you know, and utilizing this technology that this planet has to transmit messages. And so here, here I am transmitting messages using what they call the internet on a, on a platform, a, a servicing, it's really a content delivery network called YouTube, which is owned by Alphabet Corporation. They used to call themselves the weirdest name, Google. I, I don't know the history of that, but as far as I've been here on planet Earth and what I've had to deal with, the fact that I've made it this far and I'm able to transmit my face and sound through these devices to you uh, in real time or post time is a form of time travel, right? So and now can I not only transmit my face and sound of my voice, but can I somehow transmit my feelings the way I feel? So this will be an attempt using this technology to transmit my face, the sound of my voice, and possibly the way I feel. So welcome. Hello in chat. I see some of you there. Uh, I this transmission is called New Moon and Pisces Watery Quickie Stream. Watery Quickie Stream. It should have been Waters Run Deep or there. I don't. I don't know. I, I just uh, again. I, I'm new at all this. Titles and announcements and a chart up on the screen. I, let's see how much I know. Let's see how much I can portray, like to show what's in coming from my mind through my vocal cords this vibrating frequency that you take in through your eardrums and hence language and a message and symbols on the screen like a circle in a circle. How many circles we got here? We actually, let's, let's just point out how many circles we got. There's like one there, and then there's like this inner circle, and then there's another circle there, and then there's like this circle right there. So am I getting this right? This particular graphic, they call this an astrological chart, so they say. It's really 4 or 5D, really, but doesn't really portray that very well. But there's circles upon circles and they twist around and they move around and stuff so also using these devices there's a chat and you're watching this on your device it could be here it could be on your laptop or computer some of you and this is the thing that's happening youtube is pushing this really hard some of you are watching on TVs, and this is kind of where we're going, and, and the numbers are rising up for people watching on big screen TVs. Hence why I'm spending more money on the technology, and I will, to understand all this so it transmits clearly as possible. So saying that, 
I'd like to say hi to those human beings in chat. Canada Dry, hello. I am Endless Possibilities. Hey. Tara, good to see you. Mandy Bailey says, Stephen King has talked about transmitting his words to the reader. Yeah. He's uh, He definitely knows how to transmit his words. He's an interesting cat, that guy. Uh, quickies can be great. We love you. Thanks. Well, so here's a quickie. You know, uh, let's talk about this new moon really quick. Some thoughts. Ah, uh, that's a new moon at 20 degrees Pisces right here. And I would say the main aspect that's happening here is Uranus is squaring this new moon. Or, excuse me, Nicholas. Holy Monaco's human being. Correct yourself. It is not squaring. It is sextiling this new moon. We have earth and water vibing. Talk about vibing. It ain't just vibing here. Uranus is, uh, the waters are a little tingly, I would say. And, you know, what Uranus brings, not just lucidity and erraticness, but it also brings a type of, uh, uh, social context to the outer body planet itself of like shifts in groups in community in social constructive situations and we have to remember that when we're talking about uranus too let's say from a general forecasting level that that whenever uranus in the, is involved in an aspect or, or a situation let's say in this new moon that it, it is on a collective string let's say right and so we have to remember this, and this is building up to a co big collective transit moment that happens on April 20th when Jupiter, as you see here at 12 degrees, speeding along now, will be conjunct Uranus here, 21 degrees there in April. So we have this moment here with the new moon. It's something new, and we got to remember the, in the, the individual in the collective is part of like how Uranus functions, like what that means. Uh, and the unexpected, there's aloofness sometimes here, the creation, the creation of space. But uh, yeah, can it be drastic? Can it be shocking? Yes. Now, some of you, if you're paying attention here, know that officially here we have a building you know, this is a new moon chart for early Sunday morning, but you could see that Mars is squaring Uranus as we speak, as I do this vid. And uh, so we have this element going on while I'm doing this live stream and this weekend and into the new moon of like an interesting power play going on with Mars and Uranus. There's a surprise or two if you haven't had it happen, if you're not affected by this in the fixed parts of your chart. And it is, it, it is, the still waters of Pisces here are not still, is what I'm saying for the new moon. Canada Dry, thank you for the super chat. Canada Dry, it's an orange color tonight, says a moon in Pisces here, sending you always peace and love and empathetic vibes. Also, happy International Women's Day. Shout out to all my ladies. That's right. As I'm doing this stream on Friday on Venus Day, today's been International uh, Women's Day. I just want to give a shout out by saying that to my mom. I don't know if she watches this. She could be, Mom. You could be on. Um, I know what you're watching on if you do, if you even whatever. But thank you for everything you do and who you are and, and representing, you know, women. I also, do I take it this far to think all uh, the, the women I've been in relationships with my whole life? Now, that's getting into interesting waters. <laughs> but ever, but let's just say that, you know, for International Women's Day, it should be the month uh, but I get you have to pick a day, but uh, we got to give props to 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 on this day. So thank you, Canada Drive, for mentioning that. And uh, I also let me move this while I uh, could stare at my chat here really quick. Um, let me do it here. You're not going to be able to see uh, Cosmic Supermarket. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, greetings with a, with a. Pisces glyph that you have there. Mm -hmm. Brandon Locks. Hey, good to see you, Brandon, from last time, from uh, the other semana, the other fin de semana, the last weekend. And waters are not still here, says the House of Twigs. I'm sure. I'm sure it's electric around. You're just channeling 
of Mars Uranus is a good way to do it. Now, I'll, I'm going to say something, some of the stuff I said last time, but I just want to welcome some of you uh, to here. And again, thank Canada Drive for the for the uh, super chat, 20 bucks. Uh, basically, what Canada Drive did on mobile, there's a money symbol under the chat or on the top thing on, on desktop. There's a little thing you could donate. You could do whatever you want. Feel free. So Earth Star says Chiron conjuncted the south node here in March 24th, 2016, when Uranus was at 19 Aries, the upcoming solar eclipse degree. Very interesting, Earth Star. And by the way, when Earth Star is on here, it's always coming up with some facts here. So they're 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 a da they're a data freak, I could tell. <laughs> they're a data hound, which is cool. That means you're always doing stuff, following stuff, ephemeris is and other things to help you. So thank you for that. Um, check it, check it, check it. So yeah, now a pretty rambunctious weekend. Again, before this, the chart you're seeing on the screen, the new moon at 1 a.m. Pacific on the 10th, we're in a balsamic moon phase right now. And it's one of my favorite moon phases. And it's in Pisces, and we had this Mercury-Neptune conjunction that happened earlier today. Uh, I, I have kind of had it happen to me in the last 24 hours in an interesting way, and it's part of the reason why I went live tonight because I'm breaking stuff down here. My equipment, it's but except for this, is pretty much broken down. So, But I was thinking about what Pisces is in my chart, and I said, hey, I could do this still. I don't have my gear. I don't have my owl. I don't have my tornado. Uh, that's a Uranus thing. But but mostly I was just thinking, oh, touch base and just talk. And I don't have to go long tonight. But that's part. that was part of the intention. But the other thing was the balsamic moon phase here in Pisces with Mercury and Neptune here conjunct today. Uh, these are some interesting. There's vessels that one can follow in the Piscean realm, in the Pisces part of your chart, or if you're deeply affected by this, where I think the type of insight... In the type of uh, knowledge that comes up comes up with within oneself, and you know we are affected by the world as soon as we stepped into this world or came out of the womb, and and there's the knowledge that's imparted on us that's imprinted on us. But the deepest knowledge of them all, I, I think, is the knowledge that is inherent within you, and in transits in aspects like a Mercury Neptune situation and this Pisces. A new moon we're building up towards and then we're at this ending moon phase a balsamic phase before new and it's this ending this place it's it's can be very profound and so those watching right now or a little bit later know that this is cheesy and cliche what i'm about to say but you know you know and a lot of times I think we we come to know things by seeking other knowings or other truths, right? But I think when we get past all that and we get into our deepest place, that's where the knowing really is for oneself. And so a situation like this balsamic moon and all this Pisces stuff is kind of like it's a door to that, you know, and, and can be, especially if you're affected by this stuff personally in your own chart. So, you know, that's one way of looking at it. Now, there's other ways. This is we're having balsamic moon phase, Mercury, Neptune. We're having a Mars, Uranus square. It's the weekend. People out right now, at least where I am in Pacific Coast, they're probably having some beers or whatever. Can you imagine if there's this kind of like open boundaryless waters of Neptune and Mercury with the talk and thinking and then people are imbibing or or they're doing whatever else to alter their situation emotionally or their consciousness or whatever they're putting in their bodies along with all this you could see how this could actually get wild and rambunctious so you know for now and until the new moon and even till Monday I, I'm like you know, depending on who it is, I lean towards the knowing, the internal knowing and the processes and the vessels that you use to get to that place. Right. Some people, you know, they might go to a metal show tonight and, and like get blasted and all that. And then they hit their Zen space. Right. I'm one of those people like sometimes it happens that way and they catch their internal knowing. Right. Other people, they're alone and they got the candles or they're taking you know, total bath lunation, balsamic Pisces stuff is completely taking a bath and 
ritual and quiet and candles and god that sounds good um i gotta remember that do i do a live stream from bathtub next one day hmm. nah i won't do that so some i'm sure <laughs> somebody's gonna steal this idea they're gonna do it um so so saying that just want to point this out i'm looking at chat uh bcb good to see you uh saturn and pisces waters here right on right on and uh timothy reynolds good good to see you my friend so those are some thoughts here about balsamic times about piscean times but there's an electrical current of a mars uranus square and you you know a, a rambunctious week we build up to but i actually think these are pretty much somewhat decent waters we're in because of what is going to happen after the new moon I think all the way until we get to June, to be honest. I think the transits after this week, uh, they just start to get wild. And we also have to remember that on April 1st, Mercury's going to go retrograde in Aries. Okay, so let's just let's just show something here. Because when this new moon happens, Mercury is in Aries. And we're pretty much starting... The eclipse story after this. So after we get past this new moon and we start to move forward in a week, we're in eclipse land. We're, we're going there. And Mercury and Aries is going to be, you know, during the eclipse cycle in the middle of both eclipses are going to is going to go retrograde on April 1st. So, you know, you're going to backtrack here for three weeks when that happens. And Mercury is going to be co you're covering some of the ground we're going to cover in the next two weeks with Mercury. So, you know, that's what's coming. So just off the bat, if we didn't have if we didn't have eclipses. We didn't have any of that. We just had a new moon here and then the full moon that's going to happen here. That's a lot with Mercury retrograde, but it's basically a clue because now since January ish, uh, a little bit more, we haven't, we've had all the planets moving forward. And so we're inching now towards the wildness of eclipse season. And then after the eclipses with Jupiter, Uranus square, and then the Mercury, Mercury and Aries isn't really going to be done with its whole transit after being retrograde and stationing forward and moving forward. It's going to be May all of a sudden, then Mercury leaves Aries. So, you know, this is a, this is a thing just like get ready. So right now, even though it's a Mars Uranus weekend, and there's a lot of underlying energy that way. It's pretty chill considering what's about to happen, in my opinion. Okay, so so saying that, I just want to say a couple words here uh, on something. I just want to say this for the thing. J dreamy, un unworldly, vague, sensitive, unboundaried, vulnerable, empathetic, sacrificial. That's an interesting word. These are words that fall into the Piscean realm. Okay. So just want to throw some of them there. There's the reclusiveness, the, the, uh, the, the fragileness, um, suggestible surrendering, all that. I think the all encompassing vibe there. So get love, give love or give love. Good to see you from NYC. Oh, it's all late night. NYC go, go, go after the stream, go walk and get a slice for me. Will you? RNL Mirabella, wild times ahead. They are. So, so there you go. Here we want to point out on this new moon here that Mercury's in Aries. So even though it's a Pisces moon, we have this freshly moving Mercury uh, coming out of its conjunction with Neptune. All of a sudden, part of this new moon and showing itself. And in a sense, the Mars, you're in a square that's happening. Mars right here rules this, you know, particular uh mercury here so we're going to go mars rules here okay marcus mars rules aries right venus still in aquarius actually does rule all this right here okay so we got that now we want to take a look at jupiter here too okay so the, the reason is is jupiter rules pisces so we're going to look at jupiter right here okay that's ruled by this venus Okay, we kind of did that. But um, we are prepping for the next two months here. Interesting thing here to note is we still have this here, right? In Aquarius. I'm going to miss these transits. <laughs> I'm going to miss this Aquarius stuff. Uh, but basically, what you see right here is kind of a 
basically a heads up of what about to ha- what's about to happen. M- Mars and Venus are going to go in the Pisces, right? And they're going to be there during the eclipses, kind of moving through. So even though the eclipses, let's just bust out a chart. Let's just f and do this. Let's just skip actually to um, let's skip to the twenty to the twenty fifth for for giggles and whatever as they call it. <laughs> what am I doing right now on this damn? That's what I want to see. Here, here is the eclipse chart for the twenty fifth. So you could see here what I was pointing out. Now you see when we get to the twenty fifth, Mars just enters. Uh, Pisces and you see Venus there and Saturn obviously Neptune so basically when the eclipse happens we have a bunch of Pisces a Mercury in Aries it's not retrograde yet it will be six days after this the Sun obviously but then you have yeah so that's what's up so you could see this what's going on let's also point out when we have a lunar eclipse it's a full moon so there is this the moon in Libra. So you have anything in cardinal degrees that's at five, six degrees. This is really going to affect you. Okay. So that's what we're coming towards. That's what we're moving towards this in particular thing. Now saying that let's fuck around for a second and let's go. So basically on the 10th, we have the new moon, right? So we'll do it right here. There's the new moon. Hello, Christine. Good. Thanks for joining us. There's the new moon that happens on March 10th. Uh, why is it giving me a different date there? It's so weird, the time. That's not what I got to look to see the fucking computers, man. Let's go look at the real deal here on my calendar. Just to make sure it's one. Hmm. Oh, I just was reminded of something, by the way. And I will say that here in a second. What the hell? 1 a.m. Pacific. Why is this? I'm, look at look at it's 1 a.m. Pacific, and I just changed. And this chart is saying 3 a.m. And see, I started this stream. For those who join me later, you're gonna see how I started this stream, talking about I'm a human on Earth and I'm dealing with technology to transmit these messages. You cannot completely depend on that. You gotta depend on other things. This is coming from a human being on planet Earth. No matter how good the tools are electronically, it still sometimes never matches to the tool in here. Or the toll that is written on here ish. So saying that, that's the new moon there, and then we're gonna go to then two weeks after this new moon on Sunday basically is here, which is the. Uh, let's go. Let's do it again. Oh, I know why. I yo sabe por qué. Uh, here we're back to this chart. What happens for the eclipse? So basically, you know, we're two weeks away from from the eclipse, and so get ready. Okay, so saying that, those are my thoughts on the new moon. I, you know, if I look at any, any other aspects on this, I can. Uh, boom. You're obviously we can't forget here. We're paying attention to the nodes, right? But it's pretty straightforward on this new moon. I like this there. Even though it's squaring here, I got to say for me, so far this week, it's been pretty amazing. Okay, so, and I just, <laughs> I had something happen two hours ago and some earlier today that deals with this. Uh, Esmeralda, hola. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, that's what's up with this new moon. I... <laughs> I, I'm not downplaying it. Could I say what it is for each rising sign? I could. I think it I think if you're a Pisces or you got Pisces rising, you're gonna remember this one. You just are. You're gonna remember the two month next two months, but you're gonna remember this one. And and because of here, but what happens with Uranus putting its sextile on this stuff and the the newness of things and, and the forward thinking of things and how you as a Pisces or Pisces rising can cooperate with the Taurus part of your chart. So let's say you're a Pisces rising, right? Which would make your Taurus part of your chart, if I am correct, the third house. So it's more about your immediate surroundings and your dreams, actually, and your basic computational method in your head. 
<laughs> the facts. Siblings are involved here. I can go deeper than that. But the relation between your first and third houses is what's happening here if you're Pisces rising. If you're a Pisces sun or you have moon in Pisces, you know, you got to go find the Taurus part of your chart and make the connection between where your Pisces is and where Taurus is because that's this is what this new moon is really all about. And it will give you a clue here for the next month what to look out for and what to do. Okay, so uh, for the most part, I'm digging this new moon. I think it's, I like it, you know. Uh, again, let's go to two weeks later when the eclipse happens. Uh, just to do it because for what I just said to the Pisces crew, now you're looking at, we have a 20 degree thing that happened that the new moon was at 20 degrees. Here's two weeks later, right? And you see here that Venus hasn't hit 20 degrees in Pisces yet. There's Mars. So you know Mars and Venus are going to move towards this place in the weeks after this. So if you're affected by the new moon and you're Piscean, that's what you have to pay attention to. So in a sense, it doesn't end in two weeks. It doesn't end in a month. It keeps going. And even, let's say you're a 20 degree Pisces sun or, or ascendant or moon you have to really think deep here to this new moon moment because it's setting it up for the next year. You pay attention to Saturn here at 12 because when we get to June, and let's do it, let's get to June because I will I will do this on the screen. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. It's going to go, When's this, when does Saturn go retrograde? And here, I'll calculate this chart on the outside of this here, okay? Here, Saturn's going to go retrograde June 29th, okay, at 19 degrees. And it's pretty much the point of where this new moon is, where we're having here on the 25th. Let me actually switch this out so this makes a real sense here. Um, let's go new moon. And here, you could see what I'm talking about. You basically see in the inside here is this new moon that's happening here this weekend at 20 degrees. But you see here in June that Saturn is going to station at 19. So those who are directly affected by this, 18, 19, 20, 21 degrees Pisces, you could take it further if you're mutable. Check this. The, this, this. What is happening now is going to have a Saturnian gut check basically in at the end of June. Okay, so now you got this. And, you know, we have to pay attention here uh, uh, because... Neptune will be at 29 degrees in 55 minutes there in June, but it soon will go retrograde at the end. It's never crossing into Aries before the retrograde. That's what's going to happen too. Um, so we are pointing this out. I am pointing this out. Um, give me a second. Uh, AV. AV is in the house. What's up? Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, AV. Happy birthday to the Piscean, Piscean fishes. Happy birthday to those chameleons. Happy birthday to those shapeshifters who turn into other people and situations and absorb them and become them and lose themselves in them and then somehow come out of it dead and then reborn and then they know that person or situation. And they Hence you hear that Pisces live many lifetimes in one life because they, did, they had 30 job titles in their life for... 30 lovers more 10 marriages how many marriages did elizabeth taylor have not 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 to pigeonhole the pisces but that's generalizing we don't want to do that per se do we so av happy birthday uh yaz minsky if only chiron wasn't above oh yeah but remember you can use chiron you could use chiron it's a chance for you to, to integrate chiron in your world uh um so happy birthday to the Pisces people. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, I, again, just for those jumping in, that's a Saturn retrograde chart in Pisces at 19 degrees. It happens at the end of the June and it's connected to this new moon at 20 degrees that we have going on. Hell, we might as well look to see when Saturn actually stations forward after the retrograde, right? So we'll do it. We'll put this thing and we'll go to the next date. So it looks like at 12 degrees, we'll calculate this chart on the outside, November 15th of this year, then you're going to see Saturn will stop going retrograde at 12 degrees. 
if you're paying attention right now to what's going on, your mind should be blown about the beauty of astrology because I just showed you the Saturn stationing chart at the end of June. It's at 19 on this new moon that's happening this weekend. And then November 15th, when Saturn stops retrograde and moves forward, it's at 12 degrees where it is now at this new moon. So you see the chunk of time. You see the chunk of time here if you are a Pisces. Let's not forget the Virgos because if you got degrees in here, you're Virgo. This is totally you too, okay? It's your, it's, it's tu también, okay? So you have this here. So you're long tracking. Know that you got a story here. If you have 19 degrees, 20 degrees Pisces, you're, you're going through your first Saturn return. All of this is huge. You know, you're doing your Saturn in Pisces right now. Let's say you're doing your second one. This is huge. Let's say you're doing your third somehow and you're here still and you're 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 90 whatever years old and you're watching this. Does it even matter? I don't know, but I'm letting you know. So uh, there you go. So um, I got somebody in the chat. I see some of your comments in chat. So, yeah, let's point that out. So I didn't plan on talking about Saturn and Pisces here, but. Um, it's just something I've been sticking about the last couple of days because when I was looking at things, I was looking forward. I was like, man, this is such an interesting new moon. And I, I was just like, look what's tied into it. So let's just keep going on that trip because I'm just completely going off the top of my head here. Let's go back to our events and let's go back to this eclipse that uh, is here on the 25th. Here now we're back and we're looking at these Piscean planets that I was mentioning during this eclipse and we are paying attention if you're Pisces Virgo ish people you just now you know okay so uh, there's 12 degrees right there that's that's when it's going to station forward in November is paying it you got to pay attention to that so uh, so you know uh, never fear You got Saturn in your world? Oh, shit, what are you going to do? That's, that's the first thing. By the way, listen, that's that's the first thing you should get in your head if you got a Saturn transit, you know about it, you're not familiar with it, and it's hitting your world. It's like, what are you going to do? When you get to that place of what are you going to do, it's a pretty good place. Instead of like, I don't want to know. Leave me alone. Get off me. No, I don't want to do that. No, no, I'm I'm scared of that. I don't know how to I don't want to even go there. But then when you get to the place with Saturn, which you're going to, if you're having a Saturn transit, it's gonna be a reality situation. And you're like, shit. All right, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do now that I accepted it? And that is the key. That, that that's a place where you, you have to if you catch yourself doing this, is like you just acknowledged it all. And then you gotta, you know, some some of you are gonna do the work. It's going to seem like work. Some of you are going to be like relishing in all this because you like doing work or you like the task, right? It's almost where if you're that type of person, I almost is going to say like maybe the Saturnian, like if you're a Virgo and you're into the task, that kind of thing, maybe the Saturnian thing in Pisces actually is like bringing in a, a regimen and structure and stuff and rules to help you let go of constantly tweaking and doing something and letting it run your Virgo brain or situation all the time is actually to, to bring in a structured Piscean practice to help balance that. That's a rare deal. But for the most part, most Saturn stories is just like, hey, I should, I got to do this like, or, or this is it, or there's nothing I could do right now. Anyway, I got to accept this person reality and maybe I can't do it right now. Uh, how do I do this? Hence the contemplation that Saturn brings or one it might have to per se chill out and not do anything let's say saturn's on your mars you have mars and pisces or it's on your mercury you have to construct something slowly with saturn right or it's on your mars and you're like don't have any energies because you, you saturn is sucking the energy out of your mars there's all different ways of looking at this you know but i will tell you as a saturnian person that's pretty prevalent in my chart i live with it every day and it sucks and other times i'm like damn, I love it because I I was able to pull this off, like this channel. I, it took Saturnian mindset to do this for two years now, a little bit more, and to continue to do it. 
It's I just got to remember to take it easy sometimes. But still, that takes Saturn movements and Saturn structure and Saturn rules and discipline to climb up that mountain. So if you're a Saturn and Pisces person, uh, you're affected by this, remember that, okay? It's a long story, two and a half years, but remember this new moon. Remember June, and you're going to remember November of this year because those are little anchor places. When Saturn goes retrograde in June, know you're going to cover this whole area that happened from the starting round right now to June. You're going to go right back over it from June to November. So you have, in a sense, three different chapters in that story for you to play out and to work your Saturn. And when you get past, you make it to the retro, you make it to the retrograde station in November. Then that is when you apply the lessons from the last six months with Saturn and you try to really put it in play. And that's where you start to actually feel smart, possibly that the little bit of uh, hints of peaks, uh, uh, something of wisdom comes your way and you can apply it. Some of y'all don't even figure this shit out till like seven years later and then you apply it. But it, it's just some, it's just some rambling. Looking at chat here, and I, uh, so yeah, uh, my second return, Timothy says, congratulations, man. You're, you're officially smart. You, if you're not telling yourself that right now, say that you, you've already put in some time on planet Earth and you actually know for the most part somewhat how, how it works. <laughs> and th if you can have pressure in your life going through your second Saturn return. Think about the pressure and energy and thought and whatever you did during your first Saturn return or when you hit your early 40s and mid 40s when you had your Saturn opposition. What was going on? Because sometimes it can be a relief where one is in their second Saturn return, you know, in their late 50s and the 60s to go, shit, I can't believe I used to worry and put so much time and energy to these situations where blah, blah, blah. And so that's the cool thing about getting older is, is that. But you wish you still had the body of 30 years ago and you just nothing you could do about it, right? So, it, it, but, but it's here. It's here, you know? And so it's, it's, you know, refinement, the wisdom that comes through living in the refinement. So when you do do something or you go to construct or create or do whatever it is, you know, you, you, you take the wisdom shortcut, <laughs> basically, right? Uh, that will be interesting when I run into that place. Um, I hope it flows. I haven't even looked at, you know, what that is, but I definitely know what it is to do a Saturn opposition. And, um, and by the way, if you're having a Saturn opposition, you know, you can always hit me up for reading. I love working with people, yeah, um, 41, two to 45, six. I love working with y'all. You always do good work. There's always like this certain type of honesty and, and certain thing and what clients tell me and, and the reality of the situation and, and what is there. There's no hidden shit. And it's like one could really do a, I'm not going to say what I say to my clients privately about it. Cause it's kind of my little secret quip. But another way I could say it is, is just like there's just a certain knowing and standing in the world, no matter how hard a Saturn opposition is happening in the early 40s. Mind you, usually it's overlapping with a Uranus opposition, but, you know, the midlife crisis part of it, all, all that. But there's something to it that is profound and amazing, you know, like you just the way you look at life and what you're going to do next if you get that and that whole thing now what am i going to do next at the saturn opposition is the same thing of how i started this rant about when saturn comes into your world and your acceptance of the situation at hand you imagine the acceptance or having to come to the acceptance of the situation at hand in your early to mid 40s and once that happens it gets really clear what you want to do, where you're going, and then you can get a fire lit up on your ass to do it. And it's just not with the naiveness of when you were 27 to 30. Canada Dry. Oh, thank you. Thanks for another super chat. Canada Dry, you don't have to do that. But I accept. Thank you very much. I will buy a packet of rice cakes of, of, for this because I'm out. Uh, so... 
Hey, Trish. I see you in chat. No, Pisces, Sun, Virgo. Rising over the Saturn. <laughs> that's a good That's a good choice. Uh, yeah, Earth Star is saying my Saturn opposition was hell. Yep, it totally can be. It totally can be. But then there's just, you know, hopefully you got some stuff out of that when you came out of there. Um, remember with Saturn too, you know, it's, it's uh, you got Saturn. When Saturn trines your Saturn, pay attention to those moments. When Saturn is sextiling your Saturn, it's not just about the oppositions and the squares in Saturn is you want to know where those other Saturn moments are in your thing. And this is a great way, by the way, to track someone's life or your own life. We can look at all the trans, but you know, I don't, sometimes I tell clients or not, but one of the first things I do when I'm casting charts, I have a thing that I've set up on my program. I could see all the Saturn aspects for like, I picked from zero to pretty much 90 years old so i could see the places when sun, someone's having their waxing square their waning square their waxing uh trine wa waning sextile like with saturn so those are markers for me so a lot of times when i'm working with clients i'm looking to see what saturn phase that they're in and it's the one of the core bases for my readings with people even though there could be other transits happening in the chart. Let's say they got a Jupiter transit going on. They got some other stuff like that. But to me, in in the in the background is is my Saturnian view of things. So that's what's up. Um, and thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, this could be the last live stream for a while. So I thought it was gonna be last week, but I'm doing it right now. You could see. You know, shit doesn't look like the way it does, but I, you know, I could still do stuff like this, stuff like this. and talk about the memories and the echoes in the deepest water, in the Pisces part of your chart, where we go. to find and know ourselves. know ourselves do i walk around in my life in this place and whatever where i as a gemini and a mercury and gemini and listen to myself when it starts to when it starts to it starts to echo starts to echo it's kind of like that for a gemini and it just to let you know and but if you think about it from an emotional level emotional mutable level of pisces that's what's going on, going on going internally. internally. Did I say, say, did I say eternally, eternally or internally? Both? 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 Hmm. Titsy and X made it to the stream. Boy, has this week been Fucked, fucked, Titsy and X says. <laughs> let's, laugh, let's laugh. Let's laugh at that, okay? Let's laugh because sometimes you just have to laugh. You have to laugh. All right. Uh, Arnell, are you doing readings right now during this ge gesture transition? I am. Um, my my calendar for my readings doesn't open up, I think, until after the 20th of March. So I have bookings there and other things I have to deal with. I'm not available till after then. So and it'll be, you know, when I'm back at that pretty say when I'm available before the eclipses. Uh, who knows? <laughs> the 20th is what? 12 days from now or something? So, yes. So that's what's up with that. Um, ask me any questions in chat, by the way, if you do while you have me here, because it might be a while. And this is a moment where I'm not, I'm, you know, I could throw more charts up on the screen. I mean, I could. I mean, I, look, look. So why you, somebody asked me a question, okay? Let's also point out here, if you're in the United States, that we're springing forward an hour tomorrow night at 2 in the morning. We're springing forward and Mercury will have a sextile with Pluto on Sunday. Oh, I didn't even talk about that in the chart. What is going on? I, I talked about it last week. Let's do it. Let's point it out. So um, there, how, shit. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because I forgot. We got a new, newly ingress Mercury and Aries for the new moon chart. I talked about this last week on my live stream with Pluto there, right? But that kind of moves all the way into the week. And then 
let us point out here. Uh, I will bring this chart up, then I'll look at the chat. I will do this. Let's go. Oh, let's see Venus. Oh, Venus, I'm going to miss you in Aquarius. I'm going to effing miss you. <laughs> you can tell Venus and Aquarius that you're going to miss them. They're either going to cringe or secretly have a blank face, but really like it. Or they're just gonna like, you're not going to miss me. I'm always around. We're, we're pals. It's always going to be that, you know, they got weird reactions to shit like this. You're going to tell a Venus and Leo that you're going to miss them. That's what they want to hear. Of course, you're going to miss me. That's what they're going to say. Of course, you're going to miss me. You better tell me that every day, <laughs> every week. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're going to look into the Venus ingress that's going to happen on Monday. <laughs> What, 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 what is going on here? There. So, uh, there we'll calculate the chart here for Monday and here, uh, you will see Venus at 2 50 PM Pacific time on March 11th. We'll be entering Piscean land. Hey, let's not think about anything else. Let's well, wait a sec. I'm not showing you the chart. I'm like drawing a chart. You guys can't even see what the fuck I'm doing. There we go. Let's get get it together here. So, uh, so hey, Steffi G, good to see you. See you jumping in there. Okay, so here's the Venus ingress that's happening right here on Monday the 11th. And I was doing this. Let's just forget. Let's just forget the rest of the chart. Okay. Let's just wait a second. Do I forget Pluto? Oh God, it's blasphemy that I'm forgetting Pluto. I'm sorry, Pluto. And I'll even forget Saturn here. Let's just, let's, let's just color this in. Let's just color it all, man. Let's go away with this. These aspects, forget about these aspects. Okay, and let's let's just pick another color. So we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna we're gonna square it up. So we'll go there's a there right there. Okay, so Venus and Pisces. That's some yum yums, you know. That's some yummy, some yummy stuff right there. Venus is at home there it's one it's like venus's vacation home is pisces right so it's just about it's just like all encompassing deep love you know in its ways and and you know we we dig this you know we 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 accept it little does venus know it's going to run into some aspects and run into saturn that's going to come our way but but we 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 dig it we, we understand you know we 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 get that what venus does is love relationships pleasure beauty you know, the values of things. And in Pisces, see the mutableness, the deep waters of that. Man, these things taste really good there, you know. And so, you know, Pisces is, you know, think about this. I mentioned beauty, and then we think about Pisces as otherworldly. You know what I'm saying? So it's dreamy here, and it feels really good and sensual. And um, there's a merging with everything that, want you know, wants to happen here. And... You know, also, too, you, we can't re forget the uh, idealism that happens with a Jupiter ruled sign like Pisces and then with Venus being there and the idealistic love in all its forms, not just, you know, platonic and friendships and just what that is. That's what happens over here, you know. So, uh, you know, saying that uh, and <laughs> as I X out this whole chart, I got to do something there. Uh, I'll look in the chat here, but you know, it, it just, it's just, just, it, we, we just acknowledge that. Okay. And so is that happens on Monday, obviously there's going to be other aspects we're, we're going to have, we're going to have down the line, we're going to have a conjunct. That's a square. Did I just do a square? I did. That's a square, hmm. but that's not what's happening. <laughs> we're going to have. A conjunction that's going to happen. And at some point, Venus, along with Mars, they're going to make these sextile aspects to this Jupiter and Uranus. So uh, interesting stuff during the eclipse world as we're going through. It's It will kind of actually be the outlet to go to in some cases. Even though Uranus is involved, it's kind of a little bit of a place to go. Earth and water. So... Anyway, on Monday, on Monday, Venus will ingress in the Pisces. And those Pisces risings that I was talking about, 
with the Pisces sun and moon, you got that coming your way. And man, who's lucky enough, who's lucky enough to be around you? Who's lucky enough to see you sparkling as you walk through the door and through the palace to the temple? You could have this kind of like um, shimmeriness that's not stark, but harmonious. This um, sweet stickiness, you know, kind of thing. This kind of like edible edible flowers which actually would be more of an earth water thing with the, with that aspect would be edible flowers that were sweet like the nectar of things Esmeralda says Esmeralda says not a question just an update on my chart reading a couple months ago oh, oh we're doing updates things are definitely picking up for me I am forever grateful for your guidance Esmeralda, thank you so much. I'm I'm happy that things are picking up for you. And remember, it's, it has nothing to do with me. It's, it's all to do with you. But thank you for saying that. Uh, Mandy Bailey says, what does Venus and Scorpio say when you tell them you miss them? They don't say anything, but they're like, yeah, I already knew that. Yeah, you will be missing me. You'll be missing me for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's what they say. Well, they say they'll say it. They got Mercury and Scorpio. They'll really say it. Um, I don't know if I'm saying this name correctly. Uh, Valen, Valen, Prescott, longtime watcher, first time in chat. Hello and welcome. And you did your first chat. Love your live streams, Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And. Uh, for saying something in chat and you know I know there's a lot of people who don't are on a chat and they're watching and I know you're having a different chat with me <laughs> you're you're just looking at me on your screen right now let, let, let's just take a moment here before all this changes here soon for those who don't normally come in my chats and you're watching from afar and I know you or I don't know you let me take a look at you definitely doing mercury neptune right here with you so there's no words here thanks for being here uh and thanks for the support okay and uh i don't know how i pull 40 people watching this late night i am i am totally for lucky i'm a lucky motherfucker but i could have this okay nebula i see you what's up hearts back to you can i do hearts can i press hearts i could do this i could do i'm pressing all the things uh uh let's see what i do here in chat i could do this this i'm just pressing everything game over it's like so um so that's what's up uh i again i'm going on the fly i'm just, uh, let me see if anybody asked any other questions mandy get in line i don't even know what you all are talking about there um so, yeah, best wishes to you, Titi and X. Good to see you, by the way. Uh, and I got to come up with new quips in the future for when my live streams change. I have to come up. I'm going to have to have some cue cards. I'm going to have to have, like, my telestrator of, like, okay, uh, this is what you say this time. But then that would be me, would it? I just, um, yeah, okay. Hey, uh, whoa, 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 I just lost my chat. Where the hell? Oh, there's, hey. Thirst for Ray, good to see you. Thanks for the water drop. Alina Gold, hey. Yeah, I see you all are on the theme. We could throw mermaids and what do you got there? Some sushi and <laughs> we're in the water. We're in a water world today. Speaking of. Oh, shit. Maybe we'll do it to kind of wind down the stream. Say goodbye to this space. Say goodbye to this spot. I got my trusty, trusty book right here. Let's see what the trusty book. Let's just, let's just thank people. Let's just thank people who, who have written things and passed along stories and knowledge. What the hell would we be? I wouldn't be in astrology. We know nothing about one of the most, the most ancient of things. If anything, it's like 
do you under talk about Mercury Neptune? Okay, they talk about things get elusive and shit and like dream world and all that. But if you really think about it, the the poetry of all, the intricacy of words, the messages that are transcribed. And how they are carried through time and history, whether it's like how we look at the stars, a, a, a medicinal ointment made from plants that's carried through time and different cultures. You know, what human beings do with knowledge and, and how it is passed. If you really think about this, it's, it's, a, it's a wonder. It is amazing that through thousands of years... There are certain things that just keep going and pass. Do they morph? Do they get altered? They do. That's what we do. But for the most part, everything you know has come from that. It's come from that place. And it's come through song and through word and through art, the different languages to communicate. That is who we are. That's how we run things. Does technology allow us to do this? Yes, it's another form and tool, and it can be manipulative too. It could be the truth or not the truth or in between. We don't know the imagination behind it all. These are lots of things here with the Mercury-Neptune position to understand the depth and the story that gets carried through time. But this, even though the words and the colors may change, the premise and the message is still there the essence and if you could think about that you every single one of you out there is carrying that essence in your own but it's still tied into everybody else's essence in innate knowledge you see this amazing matrix world that we're living in through time and history and the scenes change the buildings change the names change but the story really is still the same so you know for those out there who who are about this, who acknowledge this. It's wondrous. If you, It's so simple, but so huge and powerful. So before I, before I going to read something here, um, Thirst for Races, hello, what are your thoughts on Venus and Cancer folks for style of love and relating? Huh? Well, I don't know. That's a, that's a, I'll just, what's the first thing that pops into my mind? Oh, like I walk in through the door and, and I, uh, and, um, I say, I'm going to make you dinner. You're not making anything tonight. Let me take care of you. <laughs> Let me take care of you. Show me where it hurts. Let me take care of you. Your shoulders. Let's rub some ointment on there. Let me, let me nurture you. Let me take care of you. Okay. So keep going on the questions. Hey, Chris Shelman just got in time to wish you best of luck on your Arizona trip. Thank you, Chris. I'll be there in a week. Thank you for saying that. Good to see you. Oh, I am endless possibilities asked if Venus is, is in Scorpio, but Mars is in Libra. Can they cross over in the natal chart? I don't understand quite what you're saying there, but like, are you saying, can they relate to each other? Um, they don't see each other from a mathematical perspective, but um, if Venus is in Scorpio, but Mars is in Libra, can they cross over? Uh, just think here they're, they're 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 like 30 degrees away from each other so they can't see like they kind of have to really look over so there, there's that but i know there's a lot of people out there who might have mars and libra in their charts with venus and scorpio so um those are interesting setups by the way danny p says your live stream is fun first time on chat welcome why we have a lot of first timers tonight why what is it maybe maybe because it's late night maybe because you guys are you got some vino in you or or, or uh, an edible. I don't know. So your live stream is fun. First time I chat. My son has Venus in Pisces. Okay. I have Venus in Virgo. He's 52 and 72. He's had to have Venus, Virgo Venus mom his whole life. <laughs> Very karmic there because you're, you're having an opposition. And it almost makes me think about like other people in a bigger lineages and families. If you were to go back, if they had Virgo Pisces placements, but obviously you're there to learn something from each other and to balance each other out. I hope the relationship's decent. Um, Endless possibility says, can they switch places instead of both being in the places they don't like being? <laughs> they cannot switch places as if you're saying it's in your chart or somebody else's chart. That's what you have. Can can they grow from the the can your the day you were born as a launching pad can things change and grow yes next question or something get love get give uh, live 
Can you please help me understand the past Kazemi with Saturn and Mercury and Pisces? I have Jupiter at 9 and Neptune at 9 at Sag. So you have a Jupiter Neptune square in your chart, which is somewhat generational. It, well, not generational, but we know that people born that year, you were a lot of people are going to have this in a longer story. So um, I don't know if I can help you understand, but I. You have to look to your Pisces part of your, wait a second. Can you please help me understand the past Kazemi with Saturn and Mercury and Pisces? Okay, so actually, if it was there on your Jupiter, um, I'm suggesting boundaries. I'm ex ex uh, suggesting, or whatever it is, I can't, I'm not doing a reading right now, but boundaries and containers for the water would help, especially if you have a, a Jupiter-Neptune uh, a square of what Jupiter and Neptune will do each other and they'll blast out that that for everybody that Saturn Mercury Kazemi with the sun that was a condensed moment that was taking water in whatever form it is and flying all over the place and trying to concentrate it into a solid basically so think solid uh Jan Halverson do you teach a course on astrology huh hmm Hmm. I don't. Would I? We will see. I don't know. It's definitely down on the bottom of the list right now because of what I'm dealing with. Uh, Venus is, Chris says, Venus, is Scorpio, Mars, and Libra in a mutual reception. Thank you, Chris. And so they are kind of connected by accident. Yeah, you got accidental like mutual reception. But we got to remember here that Mars... Even though there's a mutual reception, Mars traditionally does not flow well in Libra. I'm not saying it's bad, but the mutual reception that Chris has brought up, thank you, Chris, kind of like takes a little bit of the edge and caustic part of caustic part of it off. So that's one way of looking at it. Chris, you badass. Um, Thirst for Ray, thanks for your response. I'm a Libra rising. Would love to hear your thoughts on how South know, blah, blah, blah. I got your question before. I don't keep going. Esmeralda, yes, you need to. I would be your first student. I I don't know if I could teach. It'd probably be good for me to come up with a course, to be honest. It'd probably be really good for me to do. Would I make money? Probably. Would Does imposter syndrome come into play? Oh, yes, it does. How many people do I know in the astrology business? How many lectures have I watched? How many webinars? How many conferences I've been a part of? How many uh, part of those conferences I helped with making sure things were recorded? How much have I absorbed? Could I teach it? Maybe. But at the same time, the imposter syndrome comes in. And it's just like, man. There's so many people teaching right now. And then I and then I know the people that I admire that teach. And it's like, what am I doing teaching when you go there? But that's the imposter syndrome. At the same time, there's my way and the way I would develop or come through while I was developing it or to do something like that. It probably would be very good for me. It just ain't going to happen now. I don't see it happening this tomorrow <laughs> or this year. <laughs> but it could and it's something that i have thought about um more privately i've had clients come to me for coaching and so we've had some informal coaching but uh you know i it's not on my radar to do and just thinking about it would stress me out but it could be a good test for me to to do that and i think any astrologer that does decide to teach i'm saying not all of them but for the most part and they develop a system and courses and all that it's another way to learn actually to relearn in a different perspective because of what students ask or what you you know the things that you were learning when you first start anything and you come in and you take for granted and so let's say you're like oh i need to come up with teach something from the beginning and you're starting to talk to people who don't know. And then you realize, oh, my gosh, there's that that I know. And there's this. And these people or these people want to take the class. They don't actually know that. But you think that they know because these days you go on the Internet and you go everywhere and you're thinking everybody knows. 
So like for me, when I when I do a stream here, we're talking a lot of you, a lot of you here are watching, you know, astrology, you know, basic aspects. Right. So it's like so I'm assuming that. But at the same time, it's like you shouldn't assume that. Right. So sometimes when I'm doing the streams, I'm like, this is what this means. And I'm doing it to tell myself to remind me, but also because in case somebody watching doesn't know. Right. So it's just one of these things. I think a lot of people, uh, um, you know, it is a thing. Um, let me catch up with chat. Els Morales says, you teach me every live stream. You speak my Gemini, man. <laughs> yeah. N Nick and chat. I got Saturn on 12 Pisces. My first returns coming up. Whoa, big year. You got, this is a year. You're never going to forget this year, Nick. You got it though. You got it, Nick. You got it. Timothy says, compare and despair. <laughs> gotcha. Um, uh, Jan, your personality is why you should teach. You'd be a fun teacher. I think I got that going for me, don't I? But y'all, y'all don't understand. I am scared because of it because I'm Saturnian. And <laughs> you might not like the other side of me. I'm like, you know, it's like wrong and say do it again. You know, I be like one of these teachers. It's in me to do that. Uh, uh, but thanks. Hey, Devon, good to see you, brother teach transit theory you know what actually that's you, you kind of catch that about me i probably could do that 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 is something i can figure it out in my ways and uh good to see you Devon. and um i know hopefully you saw the the couple weeks what's going on for the meetup that's happening also working on an informal thing all off the grid study groups in town devon in portland not me running them some places to do it that are chill fun there might be pinball involved in the next one. Uh, so Titi and X says, I taught middle school. It was a good experience because young kids wouldn't let me dwell in imposter syndrome. Yeah, exactly. No, that's a good point. And it puts you in a place. Again, I, 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 I just because of my timeline and what I'm dealing with with my life in the next three months and then possibly this year, I, I just don't have it there. But it could be down the line. And, and um, anyway. Uh, Devon says, not a lot of people are teaching beyond 101 for general public interest. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, the, the reason I think sometimes people, you have so many people in the last five years teaching basic stuff too is because there's so many new people that want to know. But then there's the people who don't make it through the first, like who don't carry on and want to know more, right? So you're, playing, you're kind of playing an interesting space and one might get in a place where they just do the 101 version all the time because there's new people coming through. I've seen so many variations on this. I, I again, I, I know a lot of people in the business and the colleagues, and I see the ways. I, what I feel, though, is going to happen in general in the astrology world the next couple of years is a revamping of this. Like, I, I think some of the um, the the huge influx and in interest by many people since right before COVID, but COVID really pushing this or people have nothing to do but to join in to jump in they're at a point right now where like oh i don't want to know anymore i got another interest and there's the, then the small the small percentages of people coming out there who are going to the next level next level right so we're going to see an interesting change i think happen here in the next couple years with astrology whether it's the teaching part of it how it's taught where it's coming from the the need for people to want some sort of accreditation or degree or a version of certificate you see more of it happening now and and how one can only go so far learning a certain way so they find a mentor they find a teacher or they do a program and i think that's shifting in the astrology organizational world to those who've been doing it for a while they have to change up their internet models because people are sick of being on on zoom too this is another thing that's happening people are wanting more face to face and i already see this happening where people are trying to go local to go face to face in many classroom settings to do this which is phenomenal if this happens so you know uh, it's, it's, it's happening on multi levels and, and, and I could keep talking about that. So, uh, or star 29s are hard degrees. I know I live with them, but they're amazing places too. But, you know, so I don't even know how we got to this place, but, um, uh, you know, again, I think when there's something that's popular and trending, it remember it's a popular to trend and things wane off now 
when it comes to something like astrology or tarot, and I'm looking Titi and X is talking about the occult practice and witchcraft because there's so many people dabbling and there's so many people taking certain traditions and running off on tangents with them and, and mixing them with other things. I don't think that has lasting power per se, but I'm not trying to gatekeep because the other part of mixing and understanding is evolution and growth. But I, I think at some point people, people are smart. They, they will see past the trend and they can start to, uh, this isn't general with knowledge. I think to differentiate, to hone in on whether something is a certain type of depth and a uh, uh, long lasting power with the knowledge it, it what it is and, and, and a person teaching or a practitioner, like how far do they take it? And, you know, people eventually practicing, they'll gravitate towards um, more deeper established practices or teachers because of uh, uh, it's sort of proven or there, there's good reviews or whatever, you know, what, what humans do to, to see if something is of worth and quality. And it's not saying that anybody who's starting off or whatever doesn't have any worth and quality too. It is what it is. I think a lot of times people who are starting off astrology, they're putting their shingle up at the door. I'm, I'm not in the mood tonight to get nasty and rant about this, but I've had my opinions about this. It's like, you know, I've seen people, they're making a shit ton of money. They're charging $300 for a session. They only practice an hour and a half because they're a damn good marketer on, a marketer on TikTok. But eventually, some of those people who pay that and go there, they end up in my room because they can only go so far with someone who only, even though they're a good marketer and promoter, they don't have the experience. But I don't want the person who doesn't have the experience to stop, but there is like an honoring of knowledge in general. And I think life will always throw a curveball in your way when, in a sense, you don't honor or you disrespect innate wisdom and knowledge. I think it's natural for the world to come and kind of like humble you, right? And so saying that, and that's my nice way of talking about this, and I'm still in that place. I still take that look. I'm like, I don't know everything. I got to learn this. I got to take this class. Like I want to take a class later this year. I take a class every year in astrology, actually. So, you know, for me, it's, it's that feeling. And so when people are studying and learning and who they gravitate towards for knowledge, it's like, is it, how is it coming across? And is it worth the time and cash that you have, right? And this is just how we do things. But listen, if I had my way, I have a, a huge piece of property that would have a, a mountain that was 360 degree view of the sky. There would be all the elements involved. Obviously, the earth, there'd be a water, a creek, a, a close to an ocean or a lake. There would be a huge fire pit. There would be a five buildings. One would house a massive library. The other buildings would have cubicles or uh, like a hostel like living. So then people could come and study and do it and like like it's like hogwarts or some shit i don't know so um but you know <laughs> devon says another reason transit theory would work is you could do real-time transits that people can identify with you could connect with people you know and be like if you've been through chris year one oh i see what you're saying devon that's good it's a good point um yes yeah you kind of carry off of that uh, Danny P, this stream is more captivating than some astrology YouTubes. I could see where your head associative thoughts are more fun than the structure. <laughs> da Danny P, you're, that's who I am. <laughs> it's associative thoughts. It's my last two years on YouTube, along with other things. <laughs> that's what happens when you got a Uranus partal, Uranus Mercury trying. Okay, so... BCB have Venus and Aries and Mars and Taurus can totally relate with watchers where Venus is in Scorpio, Mars is in Libra. It's sticky, sticky. And that's a good way to put it. Sticky, sticky. And uh, literally sticky, sticky. Uh, Jan says, I just want to learn so I know what you're talking about. Okay. Now, Jan, Jan brings up a point here saying I'm not an astrologer. So part of what's going to happen here that I'm going to attempt for the second half of this year is – once I get settled in my new production place and do whatever is I'm going to do videos that are going to, I'm going to try not to talk the technical language. And if I do, it's going to be very simple to explain what the technical language. So if I had my way right now, if I had my way, what I want to do, I would have a telestrator up on screen. So like, let's say Jan right here is talking. He's like, 
Pisces sun or Venus in a Pisces, and I would draw the glyph, and da da da, and I would do write the keywords and say, you know, this in put it in a sentence form, but I would telestrate it on the screen if I did it live. If if but the plan is the second half of the year is to find people on YouTube who do not know and to keep it as simple as possible for them to learn, so it's not just over their head jargon. Plus, from a, I'll be honest, from a business standpoint, for me, I know those people are out there for me. And this goes into the teaching thing because basically I would be making videos that were very simple and I guess would be coming in some sort of teachable form. But that's the plan I have in my head. I've had this for two years. It's just, it's just time and I need to set up the way, right? So I'm glad you said that, Jan, in chat. Um, uh, let me skip here because I want to make sure I talk to somebody if they haven't asked. Uh, Rose White or Lightning, good to see you. Interpretive dances for each sign. By the way, that's already on my list if you can believe this. Something connected to what you just said. <laughs> if I have my way the next two years, there is some funny stuff I want to do that's not just with me. Uh, so... Um, <laughs> uh, Canada Dry says, when transit Saturn opposed my Mercury and Virgo in the ninth house, he decided to have a teacher in astrology. That's that's a, that's a great example. Uh, Timothy says, process is important. It is. And I, and I think for me it is. I need more structure and process. But in general, uh, for the way our world works and the rapidness of technology, I think process and structure are going to be even worth more than it's ever been in our history because of what is needed to to do deeper projects, deeper visions, to have visions of oneself come true, whatever they're doing to create, that it's never going to go away, I personally think, structure and process. And so um, anyway, that's my opinion. I don't want to be sitting around and have the computers do everything. Well, what the fuck is life all about then? You know, you got to get your hands dirty. You know, you, you, you got to get in the mix and pass you got to fail you must fail and you must be in the dirt and, and you know the dirt in your mind and the dirt out there you know so um i know this too because when i was a photographer and i had dark rooms and i had to set up the dark rooms and the mistakes that i made can you imagine i don't know since this is a free-for-all stream can you anybody like me in the past when i learned black and white photography i took a class i was already shooting color and I already was doing live editing on old video cameras and studio cameras. I went to school to do a little bit, doing some live editing on public access channels and shit. But I was in, interested in the visual. But when I found a still camera, and because I was shooting Super 8, uh, Super 16, because I was learning, I wanted to possibly go to film school or to do it myself. But it was too much work for me. So when I found a still camera and I got a canister of black and white film, it just changed my life. And then when I learned what I could do by taking a class darkrooms, I was setting up in my wherever I was living in Seattle. Like I had darkrooms in my small houses when they were affordable, and I was printing and developing every night. I for those old school people who know me, I carried a camera on my shoulder multiple for 15 years every day of my life. I have a storage unit filled with just months of negatives and stuff I haven't even seen. And in that process, the process of processing film with chemicals and the part of it where you it's not perfect, you can fuck up that process. You could fuck up taking a picture when you need to do your aperture and shutter speeds. It wasn't digital. It's not doing it for you. Everything along the way was a risk. And even if you learned, you were crashing and burning all the time. And I'm grateful for that process because... I know that doesn't go away, but at the same time, if a lot of things are done for people and humans and it's just automated, where do you do the crashing and burning in the discovery that comes in those places? I, you know, I can't even imagine. So for me, you know, that is everything. And there's mystery, as I preach about on this channel, because I do preach about it, the mystery that happens in that how many go 
bake cookies. You talk to anybody who's a baker baking cookies, no matter if they're badass 20 years, they're baking the perfect cookie. They have a bakery. They only sell one thing, the perfect cookie. I'm telling you, it's messing up sometimes, and they're still there because it's never quite perfect. It's never quite right, and you're just that's an art. It, that's what art is, like living that way. So seeing stuff a lot of you already know, okay? So um, Canada Dry says, I'm a student of nightlife astrology, gets certified in November. Good. That's yeah. His first year program is good. He signed up for year two. Sweet. Devon says you have that Scorpio fixation and the Gemini obsession with all the knowledge. I do. And hence, hence 15 containers of books that I have to load out of here. Bad Nicholas. It's and more in another storage space. Um, Esmeralda, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, let me go through. Wake me from this. If astrology, if astrology was a job with health insurance, <laughs> I I would have flipped my career for it already. We need free health care. Cheers to you. Wake me from this. Like, if my, my, am I going to sit there? Somebody can say you're a socialist thought or democratic socialist. I don't label with any party, whatever. It doesn't matter in the world. But if you look at history, like when things were produced artistically in the shifts, shit was hard, yet people creating something out of nothing. Either because they don't have the resources because they're in poverty or they're 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 forced to do something out of nothing. And that's where the biggest, amazing, most advancements happen in human history. It's like it's like you just have to look. And it's not some billionaire who did it, who came up with the thing. It's not. Most of the time, it's nobodies like you and I, the pe people who are thrown in life situations and you adapt and you come up with stuff. All you got to do is look at hip hop and rap music coming out of New York in the 70s, like this glorious thing that came out of nothing from the dirt. And so, like, you know, you can look at France, you can look at all cultures. They all have this. It's like I'm saying this is from a perspective of, like, there's certain cultures that have supported the arts or whatever. Or you revered the painter in your town and, and village because you went to the painter to paint a portrait of you and your family. And that's how he got by. And he was fed at the same time he was print. He was painting his own masterpieces. Right. So there was there was a use in, in, within within culture within groups of people in their creativity and how it contributes to the whole and the con contribution at times where in a sense the whole would be like free health care or at least some access to that right or whatever now this whole system's out of whack but it's like do astrologers need free health care yeah everybody does like if they can't afford it in some places they're trying to do this right but then don't even get me started on the Western medical system and what it does and how it leeches off all stuff and blah, 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 blah. Ranting, ranting, ranting. Cookerzilla, what is up, homie? Dude, wait, are you just getting up over there? What's going on over there? It's late or early. Uh, Timothy says, my maternal grandfather had some darkroom and many cameras. When he passed, he donated all his gear to the Girl Scouts as my grandmother was a leader in an organization. Oh, interesting. I wonder how that went. See, my mind is like, what cameras? Because I used to own, I used to have an amazing collection. I had to sell it all. I still have some in secret. Like I, I still have an old twin lens Roloflex. I, had to sell, oh, I, won't, I don't want to talk about that because it could depress me. Um. Is it even possible to be an astrologer without being a huge book collector? <laughs> well, soon it, it is. I think it is. It's possible to be an astrologer because a lot of people can't afford books and everything is on PDF right now on EPUB. So it's happening. There's reasons for that because the other part of it is that it's harder to get certain books and it they're spread around the community cult world. People know what I'm talking about. They there's certain books they can't afford. It's on PDF. You know, and it's like it's an interesting space there. But um, but but again, I hear you, Chris, because it's nothing like this. By the way, this particular one, it's because I use this book a lot. It's next to one of my altars and I was just doing this. And it smells like frankincense. Um, 
Cookerzilla paces Venus next to Saturn thoughts. Could get married. <laughs> um, I don't. I'll say the the positive of Venus Saturn is, re, you know, if any type of relationship, not just any type. It can come from that seated place. It can have strong foundations. Let's just say from a creative angle for, with, with Pisces, like if it's in that realm of the creative realm and engagement with others that way, something can be built upon that lasts a long time. Again, water needs structure, I think, so the manipulation to understand that, and Venus-Saturn can do that. Do divorces happen during Venus-Saturn? They do. Do people get married to Venus Saturn? It's attorney a contract in the relationship. They do. So there's different ways of doing this. I am in somewhat of a decent mood, and I'm going to say, you know, um, uh, think about pillars that you're building into the ground and what it takes to do that and what they're for for the long run. Nebula, what's up? How are you? Good to see you. Nebula, the only books I've read in years are astrologers. I, I got to stop reading, but I, hey, I just picked up two yesterday. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I know the spiritual meaning. Frankincense is using a lot of ritual, but like frankincense is, you know, um, from what I do, like from the... Uh, even Mars, Mercury, but a lot of Venus ritual, Aphrodite ritual, frankincense is involved. So I have a ton of different kinds of it. Um, Venus has the upper hand in Pisces might be the reason for all the great fantasy world building. Lord of the Rings, Dune. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think one day in the future, you know, I just got an idea. I, I'm just going to be on this live. So I'm going to remember. I, I think I need to do. Uh, by the way, I, my plan here is once a month to have a guest on here when we do live streams like I did last month. But one of the things I might do later this year, maybe when Neptune goes to 29 degrees, is there a couple people that I know astrologer wise that we could come on and talk about like what we've seen during the Neptune and Pisces transit. Right. And we're coming out of it here slowly. Right. But can we look back and see if we can look at what is from a world building perspective, like Devon says, have, do we see this coming out of there? Cause a lot of times this kind of stuff, you don't even see it till later. Right. But we could start to see the chapters and certain, the seed moments of this or the effects of this. I mean, it's obvious with something like the internet or, or video games or VR and all types of things, Neptune and Pisces, but the Neptune and Pisces thing too, if you take that though, the more interesting spiritual element of things during this Neptune and Pisces transit, Let's not talk about the grifters on TikTok and Instagram, okay? We're talking about 5D and all that. I just don't agree with all that shit, okay? But just talking about from a, the holistic spiritual level, what has happened, it's almost over the top. It's like, but it, it, it's just so much has come out of it. It's like, what comes through? What lasts, right? So, but but as for the for the world building thing and stuff, totally, yeah. Listen, I, I did a post for the other gig that I do. Um Actually, I'll find it here. I can't believe I'm just talking randomly here, but you all are with me. So I'm going to find a post I did for, and I'm going to read you something. Um, let's see if I can find it. Because I was working on a post last night for ESAR because I work behind the scenes for them. Um, and let's see if I can do this. This is a post I came up with last night because I I was trying to come up with a post for them for Mercury Neptune. And so this is where I ended up last night. You know, I made this I made this graphic of Mercury Neptune, but I I was look I went to go look up who who someone famous that was born with Mercury Neptune conjunction of Pisces the last time. And Rudolf Steiner is a person that I, you know, ran into last night doing my thing and and it was interesting to to see this quote and that's why i used this on this post last night um for esar astrology it, it's uh, it says and i'll read it to you um and let me see if i can see chat while i do this because i need to put this over here so um i know you can't see it on screen it's it's not going to be the biggest but uh 
it says, and this is the quote I found, to be free is to be capable of thinking one's own thoughts, not the thoughts merely of the body or of society, but thoughts generated by one's deepest, most original, most essential and spiritual self, one's individuality. If we do not believe within ourselves this deeply rooted feeling that there is something higher than ourselves, we shall never find the strength to evolve into something higher. That which secures life from exhaustion lies in the unseen world, deep at the roots of things. And so I use that quote for the post because it's a Mercury thing and the thoughts, but Rudolph had a Mercury Neptune conjunction. Uh, he was born uh, February 25th, 1861. And so you can go look at his chart. Uh, but I thought it was interesting when I ran into that. And, you know, what comes out of a Neptune and Pisces, Mercury uh, in Pisces is very, can be profound. Like what he wrote here, which, by the way, his whole world and his writings, they're all like this. It's just, you know, he's got an interesting history in the late 1800s in, in, into World War One, and even got into politics where he's ostracized out of Germany, you know, like the regime and all that cast him aside like it, you know he, he went through his shit but his influence but you there is a mercury neptune and pisces person talking right there you know it's not f frivolous and all over the place and the words falling into nothing which you know it 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 can be right it, it's uh uh but when it's dialed in right when it's dialed in you see stuff like this or read stuff like this so uh anyway so saying that, I'm going to wind down. Um, I appreciate you hanging in there with me tonight, and it's good chat. Um, so, yeah, let me wind up or down and say goodbye. And let's uh, pick something. Let's see what I'm going to pick here. That's um, I know it's balsamic moon, and I could say something to Hecate or Hecate, but I've done that before. And I, what else do I, ah, oh, let's, let's see here if this is going to work. Um, if I can find this 65. I'm going to have to be selling some books online too, because I'm overloaded and I have extra copies. Um, All right. I think I did death already. Let's. Um, hmm. I wish I had my other book, but it's in st I already packed it because there was one that is mind blowing. And I'm trying to be different tonight. That's a Sclipius. Wow. Hygieia. You could talk to Hygieia as we say goodbye here. I'm not going to do that one. No, nope, I've already done. Oh, 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 oh. Let's, let's do this one. So, um, Dora Destroy. Yo. All right. I picked the Orphic Hymn to, uh, to Eros. No. Hmm. Persephone? No. God, I'm 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 kind of at a loss here and I'm never like this. Could do the bibliomancy thing, but I'm not going to do it. Harken, dark maned Poseidon, holder of the earth. Horse god, you hold the bronze trident in your hand. You dwell in the foundations of the full bosomed sea. Shaker of the earth, deep roaring ruler of the waters. Of the, waters. 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 the waves are your blossoms, O oh, gracious one. 
as you urge horses and chariots on, rushing on the sea, splashing through the rippling brine. Unfathomable sea fell to your lot, the third portion. Think about that. What is he saying? The third portion. We're talking about Earth, the third portion, and is the underworld like they get separated? Hades got this. Poseidon, the uh, the un, the the lot that fell to Poseidon was the unfathomable sea. <laughs> if I'm breaking this, him. Anyway, waves and their wild dwellers please you. Oh, spirit of the deep. May you save the foundations of the earth and ships moving at full tilt, bringing peace and health and blameless prosperity. There you go, Poseidon. You're nothing to mess with. Hey, y'all. Thank you for hanging with me and just on a night tonight. I just randomly came on, as always, and did some charts in the beginning and made some interesting connections with Saturn and Pisces and the new moon and the retrograde with Saturn in June and what Saturn stationing in November at the degrees that are happening now and connection to the first eclipse that happens on the 25th. Uh, enjoy this balsamic moon while we're here. Uh, enjoy the new moon for what it is and get ready for an interesting couple months two two and a half months happening with transits that will uh set off you know connected to eclipses and other interesting things and in the middle and after all the eclipses we have uh uh an april 20th rendezvous with jupiter and uranus and taurus that ends a cycle and starts off and propels us now along with pluto and aquarius propels us into a new zone and we're going to skyrocket through the year here. And uh, I'm psyched for it. I'm I'm ready to go. I don't know what's happening. If anybody tells you they know what's happening, they don't. But you know enough. And I started the stream talking about messaging and communication. We just had an Orphic hymn to Poseidon. I just read a Rudolf Steiner quote about knowing one's essential self. And, you know, that is yours and yours alone. And you get to have that amazing gift. And there's times when you go there or when I go there or I do a live stream like I do where my essential self and the way I am fortunate enough to have certain gifts come across where then you run into people, whether it's in person or on some random YouTube channel in the middle of the night where you make the connection and you connect. It's being human. It's humanity, right? And so that's where the magic is, has always been, and where it always will be. And so if you're tripping this year in the future, you don't know what's going to happen with the eclipses, you got heavy stuff, or like the world, and it's election year, and there's a bunch of bullshit bombing and all that stuff, know that innately in there you have it. You have the knowing and to follow it, right? And by following it, you might run into somebody like me or I might run into somebody like you along the way. All right. So um, uh, Danny P says, thanks. You're new to me. Right on, Danny P. Good to meet you. I have Sun conjunct Pluto 19 Leo. So explain what you're in. You are got Sun Pluto life you're living. That's no joke. Timothy Re Reynolds, you live long and prosper to you. Uh Thank you, Titi and X and Alina Gold. Thank you. Um, Nebula would love a future video on asteroids. Wow, that's something I know a little bit about, but it's not my forte. But maybe I bring somebody, a, a couple people I know that are into that stuff as a guest. You just gave me another idea. Two people just popped into my mind. Uh, but thank you, Nebula. And Jan, peace to you. To everybody else that jumped in here alive and listened to me ramble, for the last hour and plus in two years. Thank you. The next time you'll see me here, it won't look the same. It'll be from other place, some other deal. And I'm excited for it. I'm excited to construct it, to uh, take a break and all that. Some of you know, I'm going to be in Tucson, Arizona next Saturday on the, on the, uh, wait, six, nine and seven on the 16th Saturday in Tucson. 
I'll be at the Cosme Astrology Yoga Center with Lisa Warman and Taylor Schuler. We're going to do a live forecast with a studio audience. You could buy a ticket to the place, and we're going to talk about the eclipses in April and the Jupiter Uranus. And then we're going to have a little party afterwards. I'm available for many readings. Really psyched to be in front of a live audience and other people to and in person. I'm it's so good. I encourage any of you who are astrologers or into it to go look locally to wherever you are to see who's out there and to connect with them in person. You're going to be part of a to go old school and also part of a new revolution. And I think that is happening in the astrology world as we come out of pandemic times and all that. There's people that are have your interest in this, whether it's that or tarot or any other else they're waiting for you they're, they're waiting to, you're, to run into each other so go find them and if you don't have it if you know somebody else in your world and community the two of you meet in person you just started a group <laughs> so you know then take the next steps after that but the more in person the better the more to balance the technological revolution that's happening the better and down the line then when you follow that knowing that you have inside you and, and you're doing with people when you can, even if it's over coffee or whatever, that is powerful stuff, right? And that's how things change. And that's where revolutions come. The ideas come through that place. So uh, I will see all of you somewhere in the future. Um, again, thank you for supporting me and for the super chats and donations. Um, I'm going to say, uh, there's, you know, one person who threw down a Canada dry, but for everybody else, um, cool. It's good. And, um, then it's time for me to go. <sighs> I gotta measure, measure, like, let's see, you gotta measure. Okay. That's going to go there. And then between my eyes is like, okay, I see there. And then my face is about, Hmm. Okay. And then, okay, no. Okay. And then, my next that's for my tuxedo i gotta get one of those things to measure my neck thing so when i wear a tuxedo or a thousand dollar italian suit on air i gotta measure my breast my my measurements what else do i have to measure um let's see um let's see what other measurements i have i, I think um on march 9th there's a measurement at 2 55 p.m which is basically almost uh, i don't know 14 hours from now a mars square uranus aspect happens yeah that's about right and then then after that we have sun sextile uranus a lot of uranus here this week and this weekend so i've made that correct and an 802 p.m here on march 9th and then mercury then's going to go into aries and then within hours we have the new moon in pisces and through all of that i will be measuring things and thinking thinking and letting go and smiling <laughs>